Hi there, good evening everyone and welcome to the final webinar in the Finance Medics series on Mind the Bleak. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce once again Dr. Syra Asher, who's an academic trainee in the Oxford Deanery and also a qualified chartered accountant. And this evening she'll be doing a webinar for us on the NHS bursary schemes, both for undergraduate and postgraduate medical students. Um, I will be monitoring the Facebook comments on the video as we go along. So if you do have any questions, any, any comments that you want to make, um, by all means, stick it in there. And then we'll do a little bit of a Q&A if there are some questions at the end. Um, and just a quick reminder, I'll be posting the feedback in there. So please, once you've watched this, whether live or on catch up, do click the link um, and give us some feedback because we really appreciate it. So over to you, Dr. Asher. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is my final webinar in this particular series. Um, there'll be a new series coming in a few months time, which will just go over some more advanced topics. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about NHS finance in, those, in that series as well. Um, might give you some good ideas for some audits um, and service evaluations you might be able to do that are related to healthcare finance. So this webinar is going to be about NHS bursaries and it's gonna be for medical students who are starting um, or in a medical, a medicine course, either undergraduate, which means they've come straight from A-level and haven't done a degree before. They have gone into an undergraduate course, so that's the five year plus course with a degree, or they've gone into a graduate entry program, which is the four year course. So we'll, we'll get started and I'll let you know when I'm like talking about each one. So we're gonna talk about the different proportions. So I focused on the NHS bursary for England. Um, I'm really sorry, I haven't actually done the ones for Scotland, Ireland or Wales. So just drop me a message if you feel like that would be useful for you. They are a little bit different just because the student fees are different in those areas. And they work a little bit differently because they're run by different um, entities. So that's why I'm, I want to make sure you are aware that this is for NHS bursary in England only. We'll be talking about the different parts of it and how it works. We'll actually be able to tell you some numbers as well um, of what you might be able to accept, expect as part of the bursary. So first of all, the NHS bursary in England, it's for medical students who will we'll be discussing um, medical students who are going to medical school in England who are deemed as home students because it's different for international students and it's different for EU students as well. EU students can't actually access NHS bursary and neither can international students. So please do keep that in mind. Um, the other thing is there are slightly different rules. For example, if you've come to, the, to England from Scotland or Wales, or Ireland, specifically to do medical schools, you'd still have to apply to your student loan from where you've come from rather than from student loans in England or bursary in England. That's a little bit messy when it comes to that one because it is a bit different depending on whether you've done a previous degree in England or not, or where you're living. So it is a bit nuanced to make sure you have a look at the NHS bursary website because it is actually very, very useful. I got all this information from the one website. I didn't have to search around. So the next thing is the maintenance part of the bursary is means tested, which means that it's based on the amount of income of either your parents, if you're dependent on them, or your spouse or partner, if you live with them. However, everybody gets a minimum annual bursary that is non-means tested of a thousand pounds. So you'll get a thousand pounds, regardless of how much your parents earn, regardless of how much your partner earns, minimum. And then you can also claim for additional expenses to cover expenses going and coming back from your placement. Um, so things like parking, which is an absolute godsend because sometimes parking at hospital can be 10 pounds plus for an entire day. So actually having a parking being able to be reimbursed for parking is actually really, really helpful. And temporary accommodation as well, if you're in a particularly um, large area where the different hospitals you're sent to means it's not exactly commutable for you. So first of all, 
there's actually specific years in which you're eligible for NHS bursary, you're not eligible straight away. If you're doing an undergraduate course, which is one of the five year plus courses, regardless of whether you've done a degree or not, you are able to um, apply for NHS bursary from the course year four and five. Um, sorry, five and six. So, sorry, the four and five is if you say intercalate in third year, then actually your course year four and five will attract the NHS bursary because it will be your year five and six overall. So basically, um, it just helps. It just means that um, intercalating is encouraged because it means that it still covers your extra years. Um, and when you're intercalating, you get the full student loan. Um, it just encourages that. I know um, at the moment, intercalating and getting an extra degree doesn't really give you any points when you're applying to foundation because of the rule changes recently, but it definitely does give you points when you're applying for core training and specialty training. So please don't let that put you off because in the long run, it actually does really benefit you to have that additional degree. So basically five-year course onwards, you can apply for NHS bursary in the fifth and the sixth years. Doesn't matter which years you intercalate in as long as the fifth and the sixth years are, um, even if you intercalate in say the sixth year, you can still apply in that year. It's just the fifth and the sixth year of the course itself. Graduate entry medicine, so the medicine courses where you have a previous degree and specifically a graduate entry course, which is four years long, you are eligible for NHS bursary from your second to your fourth year. The numbers aren't the same. So let me show you what that means. It basically, it, you can apply for practice placement expenses from your second year. And that's really helpful because in the accelerated courses, you start your clinical placements earlier, um, especially the ones that are dedicated, for example, at the University of Warwick, where it's a purely graduate entry course. All our clinical placements actually started from second year. In fact, we were, we were doing placements from first year. We weren't able to claim back for that year, unfortunately. Um, but it's when you start doing your clinical placements, it is really helpful to have. You can't claim anything in your first year at all. And um, in terms of repeat years, if you have to repeat a year, if you're on the five year plus course, NHS bursary won't cover your repeat year. That will have to be entirely self-funded. However, if you're on the four year graduate entry medicine course, one repeat year is funded. Don't ask me why. Um, I have no idea. I don't know whether it's sort of accepted that maybe the fourth year courses are a little bit more challenging or whether because of the way the funding works and the amount of money you actually get, it works out that they can afford to do it. I really don't know. It just means your repeat years will be a little bit different. So keep that in mind. Next is the tuition fee. So the NHS bursary consists of several different awards. One of the awards is a tuition fee award. So for undergraduates, which is the five plus year course, your NHS bursary covers all of your tuition fees. So all 9,250 for years five and six. You don't have to pay tuition fee. You don't have to get a tuition loan for that, which means your student loan is only covering years one, two, and three and four. Um, five and six, you actually, get paid for. Um, so that means you just don't come out with that extra debt that you would have of two years extra worth of 9,250. For graduate entry courses, the NHS bursary only covers 3,715 3, pounds of our tuition fees. And that's only from years two to four onwards. So for the first year, the first two 3,715 must be self-funded entirely. You can't get a student loan for it. You only get the student loan for the remainder. So either you have to get a loan to pay it, you have to have cash ready, you have to self-fund that basically. Um, the rest of the student tuition fee is covered by student loan for all of the years. So the 5,000 something something, I'm not, I haven't done the math, sorry. Um, so just keep that in mind. First year, you have to bring find this 3,715 from somewhere because it's going to be self-funded. And for first year, you're not going to get any practice placement um, help either. Um, you're then only going to get um, 3,715 pounds tuition fee uh, help from NHS bursary in years two to four. The rest is through the student loans company. The what thing 
uh, this, so I'm discussing NHS bursary. So this is a little bit off topic, but I'm sure many of you know that if you've already done a degree before and you go into the undergraduate medicine course, which is five plus years long, you aren't eligible to have a student loan, which means you'd have to entirely self-fund your tuition fees for years one to four and entirely self-fund living costs for what years one to four. So just remember that. Obviously, I'm not talking about the different rules in terms of tuition fees and student loans. I'm specifically talking about NHS bursary, but I just wanted to highlight that in case that was something you hadn't realized. So living costs. The next award is for your living costs. So it's sort of like a maintenance grant. Um, and so you're, it's either based on whether you're a dependent or you're an independent person. You're, if you are dependent or classified as dependent, it means that you um, are still living with your parents or you still depend on your parents financially, which means that any um, means tested bursary will be based on the income that they declare. There's a really helpful couple of cases with the calculation in the NHS bursary um, guide, which I'll be doing an article on and I'll be putting the link in there so you can have a look. But it's really helpful to show actually. So you put in your parents' income and then they're also allowed to claim certain expenses which get deducted from that figure. Then there's a small calculation which then sort of assumes the amount your parents can afford to give you. It's not necessarily what they're expected to give you and it's not necessarily what they might actually be able to give you. It's just the assumption and the calculation that's been made by NHS bursary. That's then deducted from your means tested bursary amount and then that's what you get for the year. To be an independent student, uh, there are multiple rules. One of them is you're either estranged and that's sort of like a, you have to prove that using like a court order, for example, um, you're, if, if the, your parents are no longer alive um, or if you have more than, well, minimum 36 months of payslips to show that you've been supporting yourself. So those payslips don't actually have to be continuous either. You could have been working here and there and in total you've got 36 months, so three years worth of payslips. And for that, you're means tested against your own income or your spouse's income. I know I've put the spouse's bit in the dependent bit, but that's because you're now depending on your spouse and it's counting your spouse's income, which is why the best way to maximize what you're getting is to make sure that you're classified as an independent student if you can be, um, because it means that your income is most likely to be zero or close to that. Um, so that you can attract the maximum level of maintenance grant. So like I said, everybody gets a non-means tested grant of a thousand pounds. This isn't affected by your parents' income, your spouse's income or your own income. That's what you get. And we all get extra weeks allowance as well. And these are different for whether you live in London or you live outside London in student or uh, term time accommodation, or you live outside London, but you live with your parents or spouse. You get different amounts per week. Um, anything over 30 weeks of the course, which will be based on what your course has registered with um, UCAS, it to done automatically. So you don't actually have to submit how many extra weeks you're doing. That's something your medical school has already done. And all you do is you select the course that you're on and it's calculated automatically. So the numbers I'm gonna give you are gonna be the minimum because you'll also get your extra week allowance as well. So the maintenance, the maximum you can get if you live in London, this is either if you live with your parents or you don't live with your parents, is £3,191 a year. If you live outside of London and you live in term time accommodation or student accommodation, i.e. not with your parents or spouse, then you get 2,643 maximum. And if you live outside of London, but with your parents or spouse, then you get £2,207 maximum. And then this can this will be deducted by that calculation that I mentioned in terms of their income and what they think they're contributing to your studies. So for disabled student allowance, you can apply for this if you have a disability or you believe you have a disability. It entails an assessment that is done externally. So they will send it to a company that does health assessments. Um, they will be local to where your university is. You then get this independent assessment of all your needs. The, uh, the, the whole sort of assessment can take around two hours. It's quite in depth of what needs you have and what struggles you have. 
and then you'll receive um, an allowance for, for various things and you'll receive sort of hardware, software. So you're not likely really to get um, like any extra money. You're not gonna get sort of an extra allowance or a certain amount of extra um, grant. You'll get things like if you need to print because it's easier for you to read um, off paper rather than on a laptop, you can get a printing allowance, which you claim back for whenever you buy ink um, or paper. You can get software that can either dictate uh, what's written so you can hear it or it takes down what you're saying whilst you're dictating. You can get coaching sessions with a professional learning coach if you've got a learning difficulty um, and support with that. Uh, and they also help provide um, evidence for you to have exam, um, what's the word, like extra time or breaks and things like that. They also recommend those as well. So the disabled student allowance is more a sort of holistic way of helping you succeed and putting you on the level playing field as your colleagues. It's not necessarily extra money as the word allowance says, um, but they do sort of put a round figure of how much that extra help costs for NHS bursary purposes. So then next we're going to talk about um, parents and carers allowance. Sorry, let me just go back because I knew I'd skip something, there we go. So um, you can claim mileage. Sorry, we'll, we'll go, come back to parents. Sorry, I did skip practice placement expenses by accident. So you can claim mileage from your home. So it will be basically the return um, mileage from your home to the placement minus the return mileage from your home to medical school. Um, so you get mileage for driving and cycling. So you get 28 P a mile for driving and you get 20 P a mile for cycling. Um, and you can claim any public transport costs with receipts. Um, you can also claim for passengers who are medical students by basically submitting their names and their NHS bursary numbers. And you get a little bit of extra money per mile for taking passengers as well. And that's really, really helpful. The next, because we, we do end up actually traveling quite a lot. Um, for example, one of my placements was a daily 60 mile round trip to a hospital that was quite far away. Um, and so the mileage really, really helped with that because I was spending quite a lot on petrol. Next is the parking. You can claim for all parking that's been incurred as part of your placement. So say you've had to do street parking, if you're doing sort of a house visit, um, if you've had to go to um, a hospital, do the parking from there. Um, I, if I've had to go say, We've had to go to a city centre clinic um, and there's no parking except for the NCP car park. We still claim that that because that's what we needed to, where we could park to go to our city centre clinic. So you basically, as long as you have the receipt, you can claim it back. And uh, lastly, you can claim back for a temporary accommodation for up to £55 a night um, if this is needed for um, placements that are non-commutable or if you're doing nights, for example, and it's a night placement then it's safer for you to not have to commute before and after and you should stay overnight. So you can do that for up to 55 pounds a night. So those are your practice placement expenses. We talked about disabled students now and we are here on parents and carers. So if you have children or you have an adult who's completely financially dependent on you, you can actually claim parents or carers allowance. Um, if you are wholly or mainly financial, if someone's wholly or mainly financially dependent on you throughout your time of training, um, so you reapply every year, and so if circumstances change, the amount you get changes. So for your partner or your first child, so say your partner and two of your children are dependent on you, your partner will attract two thousand four hundred forty-eight pounds a year, and the two kids will attract five hundred forty-nine pounds each. If it's just your first child and your second child, not your partner, the first child will attract 2,448 pounds and the next child will attract 549 pounds. On top of this, you also get a parent's learning allowance. And this is a means tested allowance. And we talked about means tested. It's based on if you're living with a partner who earns money, for example, or if you're living with your family who earn money, um, it'll be based on how much they make and they'll pay you up to £1,204 per year to students who have dependent children. 
Um, there's a separate form that you have to fill in for childcare costs. So say you need a childminder or nursery, um, they can cover up to 85% of costs with a registered childminder or registered nursery. That's on their website. Um, and you can claim that separately. And it's a separate hard copy form that you get off the website. So basically, if you have kids, please don't let that stop you from going to medical school. They will be super proud of you, of how hard you work. They'll see you for an ex like excellent example that you are. And there is help available for, for you. Just a little note as well, which is much more detailed in the guide. If two of you are medical students or if two of you are students, then you can each claim 50% of the costs so that together you've got 100%. Or one of you can choose to claim 100% of the costs and then the other person doesn't. So you can't double up basically. Either you both claim half the costs each or one of you claims all of the costs. Um, wow, well, that was quick. So um, please, please give us feedback on this one. I hope I've covered um, everything you needed about the bursary. Um, if there are any questions, then please pop them in the chat or just send them for, to me at finance at mindthebleep.com. Um, I hope that broke down enough. It was, this webinar came out as a very kind request from one of our viewers and I thought actually it would be a really good idea to go through it. So James, do we have any questions? Uh, yes, we do actually. Yeah. So Jay has written in and said, yes, please, for some info about studying in Northern Ireland. Okay. Um, and also, do universities or finance awarding bodies have authority on fee status? So fee status is based. So the first one about the island thing, I'll have to go away and come back. I might do an article on that one for you. So just keep an eye out. Um, the next thing about fee status, the fee status is based on a very strict set of criteria. And there is no movement on that. The Per, well, the, the entity that decides on your fee status is your university. So um, your university will tell NHS bursary what your fee status is, that you can't then uh, go back to NHS bursary and, and sort of appeal it. It's what the university have told them. So if you did have to appeal it, it would be to the university. Um, in terms of fee status, uh, you have to have um, been given leave to remain in the country, lived for a certain amount of time in the country, um, and uh, there are a few other things in the guide. I can put that in the article for you, but the fee status is, is dictated by the university. Okay, thank you. So hopefully that answers your question, Jay. And then there's uh, another question from Erwa. So as a graduate starting the undergraduate course, am I eligible, from the thousand, am I eligible for the thousand pounds or is that only from my fifth year of study? So you're eligible for all of this uh, NHS bursary that we talked about in your fifth and sixth year. You, the issues you will have is you won't be able to get student loan, which is different. It's from the student loans company. Um, so Student Finance England, you'll have issues get, with that because you'll have to self-fund all of the first to the fourth year. Where, but you for the fifth and the sixth year, you can have depending on whether you're a dependent or not, the minimum £1,000 maintenance grant, all of the practice placement expenses, and the tuition fee uh, bursary. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully that helps you, Owa. Um, so those are all the questions so far. Um, we do come back and check these. So if anyone else does have questions, particularly anyone that is watching it on catch up, um, do post them and we will try and get back to you on that. Um, otherwise, I think that's all from us this evening. Just please take the time to go and fill out the feedback. Um, we do read it, we do use it. Um, and as uh, Dr. Asher will be developing another series of webinars, it is useful to have some stuff to go on to make them as best as possible for you guys. Uh, anything else from you, Dr. Asher? No, um, just basically don't worry too much about this because NHS bursary uh, do come and do a talk in your first week uh, explaining everything and they stick they are actually directly from NHS BSA um, who are the body who who provide it and they 